Today's conversation is about masks, and this is for AP Art History, and I'm Mr. Bruns. What is it about masks? We see masks in our superheroes here. And what do masks do? What does it do for Batman, Batgirl, The Flash, Spider-Man, Wolverine? Is it about hiding their identity? Could be. Are they protecting people? Could be. But if we notice the mask, does it transform them into something else? When we participate in Halloween and we wear a mask, does it transform us into something else? And that's what our conversation today about masks is all about. It's about transforming from one thing to another. We'll start our discussion on masks, about African masks. And what we see is that African cultures express themselves artistically in a wide range of materials and forms, and carved wooden statues. And they also did masks. And masks seems to have attracted most of the attention from the Western world and people who like to collect. Masks also influenced artists like Pablo Picasso and George Brock. Masks exhibited a wide range of styles, varying in what kind of materials were used, the shapes of those, decorations, and also in the manner in which they were worn and sometimes carried. As a rule, they are made of carved wood, but carry additional decorations in materials of different kinds, some of which may help increase the power of that mask. The most common type of mask is designed to be worn over the face. Others are to be worn helmet-like, sort of a veritable piece of sculpturing that are carried on the head. Whatever the form, their value in society remains unwavering, given the role that they uh, play, most important occasions of collective life. Masks bear witness to the passing of tribal wisdom from the elders to the young, in the initiation rites of saying going from being a child to being an adult puberty, and provides uh, moral rules by serving as a reminder of the traditional customs of a group. Masks can also be used in funeral rituals. It represents the, the means of dispelling or summoning and countering the evil forces, the negative forces released by death. Masks can be worn for agricultural ceremonies in order to mark the period of social and cosmic regeneration. The mask also celebrates mythical times. Say we're going to redo you know, the birth of the world or recalling tribal heroes. Masks can also be found within secret societies that had political or judicial functions. It serves as an instrument of power and social control. Let's take a look at masks of or for initiation. We'll start with um, the Bois people. Uh, the Bois people are of central uh, Burkina Faso and they initiated young men and women into adulthood following the onset of puberty. Uh, the initiates are, quote, kidnapped by older relatives. Um, the initiates are told to remove their clothing. They're going to sleep on the ground without blankets. They're isolated from community. Um, and, but also in this, they're instructed about the world of the nature spirits and about the masks that represent them. They learn of the spirit each mask represents, and they have to memorize the story of each spirit's encounter with the founding ancestor of the clan. The initiate also constructs the costume from hemp to be worn with the mask. They learn the songs and the instruments that accompany the mask in the performance. Only boys wear each mask in turn and learn the dance steps that express the character and the personality of each mask and what it represents, while the girls sing the accompanying songs. Bois masks depict spirits that have taken an animal form, such as a crocodile, a hyena, a hawk, or a serpent. Other masks represent spirits in human form. The most spectacular of these masks, as we see here, represents the spirits that haven't taken either an animal form or a human form. These masks are abstract in patterning. If we look at it, the white crescent at the top represents the quarter moon under which the initi initiation is held. 
The white triangles below represent the bull roars. That's uh, a, a sacred sound maker. There, you have a, a piece of wood on one end, and as it's spun over the head using a string, it creates this roaring sound. That large central X represents the scar that every initiate uh, bois bears as a, as a mark of devotion. The horizontal zigzags at the bottom represent the path of the ancestors and symbolizes adherence to ancestral ways. And that red hook that you see that projects in front of the face is said to represent the beak of a hornbill, a bird that's associated with the supernatural world and believed to be the middleman between the living and the dead. The mask proudly announces the initiate's passage to adulthood. No longer are they a child, now they are an adult. While encoding the secrets of initiation in abstract symbols of, of proper mor uh, moral conduct. This mask is part of an initial initiation rite for uh, young girls into womanhood. So among the Mende, the Timne, the Vai, the Capel, the people of the Sierra Leone area, uh, initiation of girls into adulthood is organized by the Society of Older Women called the Sande or the Bondo. Sande, S A N D E, and the Bondo, the B O N D O. The initiation culminates with the ritual bath at a river, the cleansing. And at the ceremony, the Sande women wear black gloves and stockings, black costumes shredded with raffia fibers that cover the entire body. And the black mask called the Nuo or the Sowe. Now, the mask is worn by senior members of women of the Sandy Society, whose responsibility it is to prepare the Sandy girls for their adult roles in society, that is, marriage and child rearing. The meaning of the mask are complex, but it can be related to certain African butterflies, with the creases at the base of the mask representing its body segments. The young women entering into adulthood are like that butterfly who are emerging from the cocoon. And the comparison extends even farther, for just as the butterfly feeds on the toxic sap of a milkweed to make itself poisonous so that birds won't eat it, so the medicinal powers of the Sandy Society are believed to protect young women as they're entering into adulthood from danger. Let's take a look at another mask. This is from the Bwami, it's a Bwami mask, and this is associated with the Lega people who live in the forested region between the headwaters of the Congo River and the Great Lakes of East Africa. The political system is based on a voluntary association called the Bwami. It is comprised of six levels or grades, and some 80% of Lega men belong to Bwami, and their goal is to get to the highest grade, get to that sixth level. For women, they can also belong to the Buwami, but they cannot hold a higher grade than their husbands. Promotion or movement from one Buwami to the next takes many years, so it's not anything instantaneous. And it's not only the candidate's character, but it's also on his or her ability to pay a fee, an initiation fee, which as you go from one level, one Buwami to the next, increases dramatically. So at some point, no candidate for any level of Buwami can pay the fee without some sort of assistance. And they have to go and ha get help from a relative to help make the necessary payment. Buwami initiations into advanced grades or the next level are held in, in the plaza at the center of the community in the presence of all members and a dance and song are performed and the values and the ideals that are, are part of that graded Buwami are explained through proverbs and sayings. The mask you see here is associated with the Yano Nil, the second grade of Buwami. Typical Lega masks, the head is fashioned in an oval into which is carved a concave heart-shaped face with narrow raised features. The masks are often painted white with clay and fitted with a long beard made of plant fibers. Too small to cover the face, these are displayed in other ways. They're held in the palm of your hand or they're attached to the thigh. Each means of display recalls a different value or a saying so that one mask may convey a variety of meanings. The masks symbolize continuity between ancestors and the living community. 
and are thought to be direct links between those that have passed uh, and the past members of the Bwami. The Yoruba of Nigeria, who inherited an ancient sculptural tradition of Ife, I-F-E, produced an art that's still alive today that draws inspiration from a large pantheon and expresses a centralized social and political structure. Masks of this culture are associated with secret societies, and they vary from hemispherical polychrome types of, of carved soft wood uh, in a highly expressive style to heavy forms and with a stylized skull. Sometimes we'll see Janus faced uh, headdresses used for communicating with the hereafter. The shape of the eyes and the mouth are consistent with features in masks, as you see in the two above and statues, and despite subtle local variations, you can see the Yoruba style. The area of the Congo River Basin is noted for its broad range of racial groups and correspondingly wide variety of sculptural styles. Masters of the art of engraving, the Chokwe, have produced sophisticated figures of sovereigns with elaborate headgear, an element that, as in the masks, is a symbol of power. The Chokwe also uh, make other types of ritual masks that would be characterized by slit eyes set in large, deep uh, orbital cavities and a wide mouth and a long, slender nose. Even though the, this particular mask has female qualities to it, it is used by men in ritual dances. Male dancers are covered with their identities masked, dressed as women with braided hair, used in ritual in which men move like women. Interesting that you should note that the Chokwe are a matriarchal society. That means that the family lineage lies within the mom and not so much the dad. And here we see a depiction of female ancestors uh, of the past. Mask is then discarded when not in use and can be buried with the dancer. So again, the characteristics of this particular piece is look for that enlarged eye sockets, the, the, the pushed-in chin, the slendered nose, the high forehead, the balancing of features, a level of symmetry, and that almost closed eyes, those slit eyes. So let's shift away from the African culture and let's go to the Pacific Northwest cultures. And we have here what are known as the transformation masks of the no Northwest coast of Canada. These masks were worn, uh, like the like Africans wore their masks. Masks were worn by native people of the Pacific Northwest, Western Canada, and Alaska. Again, this is worn over the head as part of a, a complete body costume. Used during ritual performances, the wearer would then open and close this transformation mask using a set of strings. Opening the mask reveals another face inside, maybe an ancestor. Bird exteriors opens to reveal that the human head. So what do we have on the outside here? We have probably an eagle of some sort. And at the moment of transformation, the performer will turn his back to the audience to conceal the action. And that's supposed to create that aha moment as they turn around. So again, like our other masks, we're being transformed from one element, but this mask is not used for initiation rites. Let's leave the Pacific Northwest and go to Australia. And this is a book mask. Uh, it is from the Torres Strait people. Uh, Torres Strait is the water passageway between Australia and New Guinea. Um, this is made of turtle shell, which makes it very unique uh, to the region in wood and cassowary, feathers, fiber, resin, shell, and paint. Um, they use with grass costumes and ceremonies uh, that deal with a variety of things. It could be death, it could be fertility, it could be um, for, you know, let's have a good harvest, uh, a male initiation. Ceremonies that use the mask involve uh, fires, drum beats, chanting, uh, recreating mythical ancestral beings, and their impact on these people and everyday activities. Some of these masks combine human and animal forms, so you can see the bird 
on top of this sort of male, abstract male figuring, um, which makes it sort of that combination. So I would then, you know, how does this kind of apply to others? And I would say the strongest comparison here is from the, the prior slide on the transformation mask. So what do we learn about masks? We learn that some of them are about initiations, going from being a child to an adult. We learn that some masks are used for fertility. Some masks are used for funerary um, elements. Some transform us from one element to another element. But think about what masks do. Think about all the different cultures that we discussed. And thanks for listening.